Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Chaos TV Challenger Series number 14. This is uh, the grand finale. This is the first match of the best of five series between Copenhagen Wolves and Avalanche Prime. My name is Nature. I am joined by Stress today. Welcome Stress. Welcome. Nice to be here as well. I, uh, as I said yesterday to, I believe it was Puddington, hadn't been around in a little while, but I've made a bit of a return since... Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I have enjoyed working with the Chaos crew a lot, and I'm looking forward to working with yourself as well, Nature. And we are into picks and bans, so let's see what these guys are banning out. It is being, it's going to be Vi, Singed, Annie, Thresh, Elise, and we are now waiting on the very last ban of Avalanche Prime. And I am not too sure what it's going to be. It is going to be Elise Sin, so they won't. I uh, want to see those insect maneuvers back from yesterday, I believe, uh, between uh, which happened between them and Dignitas UK. So right now it's Young Buck's turn to pick a champion for Copenhagen Wolves, and he is hovering over the Caitlyn right now. And um, I'm not too sure whether we've seen that before with Copenhagen Wolves. Can you maybe tell me a little bit more about that? Uh, Caitlyn's a champion that Forgiven's played quite a bit. Uh, it's a champion that most AD carries will have played overall, but I think it's one of Forgiven's more comfortable champions, uh, just, uh, you know, as, as the current meta goes. We've seen a couple of adjustments. Caitlyn's just kind of been consistent throughout everything, so it's not too surprising that they would at least be prioritizing her fairly highly here. It does mean that they can't answer with a few of the other AD carries. However, it lets through a couple more of the higher priority picks for the top and jungle come through, that being Shivana. And of course there are a couple of other high priority junglers here available, Aatrox is available. Some of the bands here are a little uh, confusing for people if maybe they haven't seen either of these teams play before. Uh, any, su any support is like very, very common right now in, in competitive, just because of the AoE stun that comes from it. Singed, however, is a ban that uh, Copenhagen Wolves must have been watching the games yesterday from Avalanche against Team Dignitas UK, where Singed actually would allow the Avalanche team to have a really strong team composition that just didn't take a lot of damage and just took objectives all the way across the map. So not all that surprised to see Singe banned out in this series. All right, so for now, Avalanche Prime hovering over the Shivana and the Zyra, and it looks like they will actually be picking those two up. So uh, strong engage coming in there for Avalanche Prime as well as quite a strong peeling potential on their side as Copenhagen Wolves are hovering over that Aatrox as well as the Sona and um, I believe we have seen Unlimited running the Sona quite often beforehand. Yeah, again, it's it's another support that I would expect every support player to have in their arsenal. Some will favor towards, uh, you know, Zyra, Thresh, that kind of catch support and then you know that Sona with the crescendo and just her sustain that she provides in lane slightly different but again very very common uh, support and Aatrox is a champion that I know amazing has uh, it fits his playstyle he likes a lot of the champions like Lee Sin like Aatrox that have this early game pressure and now that might be the opposite of what we're gonna see out of Dan as he is hovering over a Nasus I'll remind you guys, I am slightly behind on the stream as that's where I'm spectating Champion Select from. I will be in the game live as it plays on. But Nasus is a complete opposite to Aatrox. Nasus will work better the longer the game goes on because of the way uh, he will become more tanky, he'll be able to absorb damage, has good objective control as well. So I think by the looks of it, there's going to be fairly good scaling here on the Avalanche team and we'll see exactly how Copenhagen, Copenhagen Wolves will uh, counteract this with their next two picks. Yeah, amazing and forgiven right now, looking to pick up those last two champions for their team. Um, I believe they will still be looking for a jungler as well as a top laner, although they could be using that Aatrox in the jungle of uh, as well, of course. So Amazing and Forgiven's turn uh, to pick their champions right now as Forgiven, I haven't touched on that, uh, but Forgiven has returned to the Copenhagen Wolves team. He hasn't played yesterday, he was replaced, but now he is back, so Copenhagen Wolves are back in full force. Amazing now hovering over the... Um, now I forgot his name. Wow, that's great. Um, Vladimir. Vladimir, sorry, yes. And uh, Forgiven... Now hovering over that uh, 
Gragas, and he's actually locking that in instantly. And on the, on the other side, we do have a big goose locking in the Nidalee. Yes, so our lineups have been finished here, and now Vladimir is going to give Copenhagen Wolves better scaling here. I'm wondering exactly, yeah, I was expecting that switch up between Youngbuck and Kautad to put... Uh, Gragas in the mid lane and Vladimir in the top. Now Vladimir scales incredibly well into the game. The longer the game goes on, very similarly to Nasus, who actually has been given up to Anstrom, so it's going to be Shivana in the jungle role. And that means both top laners are going to perhaps have some of the best scaling in the game the later this goes on. So I wouldn't expect to see too much out of them fairly early on, if I'm being completely honest. Whereas in this mid lane, there's high burst potential. You can see that the uh, the poke that's going to come from Nidalee and uh, the barrels from Gragas just means that it's going to be a fairly explosive mid lane for this game. I would expect to see more of the focus around that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are heading into a quick commercial break. When we come back, it is going to be the very first match between Copenhagen Wolves and Avalanche Prime. We will see you soon.
All right, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to Chaos TV. This is the grand finale of the Chaos TV Challenger Series between Copenhagen Wolves and the Avalanche Prime Team. I'm joined once again by Stress. Stress, do you think we could have any level one action going on here? Uh, it looks like Avalanche is setting up fairly defensively, but something that's actually really intriguing for me in this game is Sliver, who's playing Ezreal here has 15% cooldown reduction and a spec'd into utility tree on Ezreal. I don't know whether that's a mistake or not, but typically you would expect Ezreal to have more than his... Yeah, you would have expect Ezreal to be highly into offense right now, so that's an interesting one we'll have to watch out for. Maybe he's got something uh, different planned for us, but both teams have looked to invade here and they've got some decent wards up. Wonder whether we'll see full committance out of the Copenhagen Wolves here onto red. Anstrom getting chased down a little by Young Buck, getting scared off, if you will. And now Copenhagen Wolves are looking to retreat out of that Avalanche Prime jungle, as Avalanche Prime has made a an invading move of themselves in that bottom side of the Copenhagen Wolves jungle. They have been spotted by a ward though, so Copenhagen Wolves will know what is going down there. And of course, with a jungler that has a uh, very quick clear, they should be able to take this down uh, very quickly indeed. Now, the reaction has come out by uh, Copenhagen Wolves. Amazing is stealing away the red, but he's going to have to use smite on this. He got taken very low from the spirit fire out of Nasus. So, I believe Amazing, I don't know whether he's got enough to sustain off just his uh, health regen alone, but Forgiven might be caught out here. Slive is going to come around the side. Forgiven has the ignite ticking. Will he be able to survive this one? There's not a, ma a major amount of damage coming out yet. Barriers have come out. And this is purely a micro fight here to begin the game, and Sliver will pick up the kill. No problem at all right there for Sliver. Um, Unlimited was just a little bit too late there to help out. And first blood going over there to Avalanche Prime. Sliver will have uh, a, quite a major advantage here in this bottom lane from now on. And I... I'm quite certain that will be really, really painful for Forgiven from now on. Yeah, and that's the kind of start that they needed here. I Again, I'm not sure whether those the uh, Masteries was intentional out of Sliver, but if it wasn't, that will help them get into the game uh, quite a bit. Now, the young buck up in that top lane has to be careful here. Anstrom taking quite a lot of damage because of that gank from Amazing. Amazing ha has hit his Blades of Torment, takes a little bit of lane tax and just leaves once again. Now Young Buck is looking to push out that top lane, but Dan is looking to uh, support Anstrom near that turret as well. Although Amazing and Young Buck are, look are suspecting this, I believe, they have started these golems. Now Dan might be in trouble here, but Young Buck just backs away and Dan doesn't see anyone, although he has spotted out amazing for now. And they've got to be careful in that mid lane because Kautar's already taken a couple of spears from Big Goose. And one thing that uh, Gragas doesn't do too well with is damage in the early game. Of course, his passive will regenerate his health every time he uses a spell, but if he hasn't got that much max health to begin with, it won't regenerate a lot, but he's getting ganked. Big Goose in all kinds of trouble here, throws out the spears. Young Buck taking a lot of damage, teleport coming in, Anstrom has joined the fight right now. Barrel comes out, but it is all too little, all too late, and Amazing is forced to back away under his turret. Dan taking a turret shot, but yeah, he won't be able to kill um, Cowtard, uh, Amazing rather, of course, because Amazing has got that blood well available, and right now everyone returns to their respective lanes, and Young Buck has got the uh, the freedom right now to take a little bit of farm under Anstrom's turret. Yeah, now they did burn the flash from Cowtard, so that's going to leave Gragas vulnerable if he keeps eating those spears, but I think he's going to start playing a little bit more carefully now that he can see that the pressure is coming towards him in this game. You can see once again Anstrom and Youngbug just in that top lane exchanging damage and walking back away farming up once again. Both of these top laners are going to want to farm heavily into the late game. So once again Dan joining Anstrom in that top lane. Young Buck might just want to be careful. I'm not too sure whether he has actually seen Dan. I don't believe so to be honest. So Dan might just be looking for a gank here. Young Buck taking a little bit of damage because of that flame uh, breath. But it is looking like he's actually made a clean escape from that gank there. 
Meanwhile, in that bottom lane, Slave and Forgiven just still exchanging a little bit of damage. And uh, when we look at farm, it is looking like Sniver is just four farm ahead, us uh, four CS rather, uh, which isn't too much, but it's a start. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication up in that top lane. They didn't quite get the wither out of Nasus as he turned back to farm. So uh, something that Avalanche may need to look at a little bit better, just making sure that they're not wasting any time from their jungler. Now, Big Goose has gone back and picked up a fairly important item here on Nidalee. He started Doran's Ring, which doesn't really give him a lot of mana regeneration. Now, the Chalice of Harmony will allow him to really throw out the poke with those spears far more often, as he doesn't exactly have to worry about his mana consumptions, and that really is going to make that lane a little bit more difficult for Kautard until he can get more health, but Kautard is moving across as he's found Dan in the jungle. Yeah, Dan might be in trouble here, he has just turned level 5 as he does turn back and escapes here. Kautard will be missing one of those wraiths there, or uh, three rather, as uh, Dan has picked up three of them earlier and right now Kautard returning to his lane and Forgiven and Unlimited have pushed up all the way to the turret and Mouvert and Sliver are taking quite a lot of poke right there. The thing about the early kill that they picked up in that bottom lane is uh, when Sliver caught Caitlyn out of position. They haven't backed to make use of the gold, and since then, Forgiven has actually got himself a very minor CS lead. So even though the gold is still not even, there's no noticeable difference between the two carriers right now in the damage they're outputting, and that's just allowing Caitlyn to use her range to her advantage. And it looks like that's kind of going against Avalanche right now, but there's a lot of action in the jungle as that red buff is about to spawn. Ooh, amazing, taking quite a lot of damage of Dan here. Dan might just be looking to pick up this kill, but here comes Kautard. Kautard has got a lot of damage on him, and Dan goes down to the explosive cast in the end. Cask in the end. Now Kautard might be in trouble himself, as Big Goose is looking to chase him down with the help of Anstrom. Young Buck is here to help, and Anstrom and Big Goose might be in trouble for themselves. Now, amazing, his blood will gets popped as he dark flights in. Big Goose now gets slowed down, Hemo Plague went down as well, Kautard in trouble here as Anstrom is chasing him down, Big Goose goes down, Kautard will surely go down to Anstrom and it's a two, uh, it's a two for two I believe. Yeah, two for two overall, well no, sorry, two, uh, two for, for one. one, and they yeah. got the passive out of Amazing, that's where the second one looked like it came from, so as soon as Anstrom popped that Fury of the Sands, Vladimir was noping his way out of that one, Young Buck knows better than to fight in that situation as a Vladimir. He hasn't reached his damage peak yet, but Dan still might have been in trouble here as Amazing was maybe looking to steal away that red butt. Dan in that bottom lane, once again, there's a lot of damage coming out. Yeah, Mouvert tanking that ace in the hole for Sliver, and Sliver might just have bitten the dust because of that, as Forgiven and Unlimited are once again pushing out that lane all the way to the turn, as they might just be looking for a dive here, but Mouvert and Sliver are both backing away. Oh, uh, never mind, Mouvert has uh, decided against backing away, as Dan is here to defend his turret, once, uh, although he might just still be in trouble, but Forgiven and Unlimited are not going to decide and dive here, I believe. Now, this top lane is heavily going in favor of uh, Young Buck. He's already way out CSing Anstrom because of the amount of time that Anstrom has spent out of lane. You saw him teleport earlier and then also cross ahead to the jungle for that red invade as uh, they had to defend that. But it just is ending up that Vladimir is starting to scale fairly well. You can see Hextech Revolver has already been picked up. And even though Anstrom has started to uh, itemize against that with the Negatron Cloak, the rest of his team are going to struggle against this Vladimir if they continue to let Young Buck farm. So for now, Young Buck putting quite a lot of damage on Anstrom. And Anstrom really wants to be careful here that he doesn't uh, accidentally die, if you will. And uh oh, this might just spell trouble for the Copenhagen Wolves as Avalanche Prime have started out that dragon and it will be picked up by them. So the very first dragon of the game going over to Avalanche Prime and Sliver also in that bottom lane trying to put a, quite a lot of damage on that turret as their turret on their side has taken quite a lot of damage of itself. Yeah, you can see up in that top lane, neither of these really taking all that much damage because Young Buck's going to heal most of it back and Anstrom just doesn't have much damage himself right now. He's not got 
a, an amazing amount of stacks on Siphoning Strike, so he's not really hitting Young Buck very hard. This is just going to be the same back and forth that we've seen from most top lane duels for a very long time now, so I wouldn't expect all that much to come out from there anytime soon. But again, I feel like they have to start doing something against this Vladimir. There is a lot of focus on this bottom lane, though, as the Copenhagen Wolves have been pushing up fairly hard. That tower is fairly low on health, and... It was a good reaction out of Avalanche, and something we saw in their games yesterday is they're not afraid to realize exactly the map situation, and then take a dragon and start rotating very well. So already good rotations out of them, but there's a fight break now. Yeah, map. Forgiven might be in trouble here. Uh, Dragon's Ascent comes down, but here is amazing. Trying to get a lot of damage down on Sliver. Sliver missing the Mystic Shots, forced to use the barrier, and I don't think... Oh, he actually doesn't go down. But here comes the Ace and Hold. Dan will block that one out. And they both survive, but that is surely going to spell the destruction of that very first turn for the Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, that will turn the game heavily in their, well, more heavily in their favor, as it is a fairly even game right now. It has been back and forth over the objectives. So when that tower falls, they'll have themselves about a 1,500 gold lead. And Avalanche have found themselves behind before. We saw them behind in both games yesterday against Dignitas UK and would end up turning that one around with some really nice rotations in the mid game as they started losing their towers. So Avalanche definitely have it within them to uh, make the plays that are required to come back from a situation like this. Ooh, Kowtart eating a javelin right there. That is starting to do uh, a little bit more damage than you would be comfortable with. So, Kowtart once again trying to push out those lanes as we do have Amazing picking up his red buff, or he will rather be uh, donating that over to Forgiven, I believe. As True Shot Barrage comes across in the bottom lane to clear out those minions, and Kowtart might be in trouble here. Move moving in, doesn't hit the Grasping Roots, and Kowtart survives or escapes rather once again now ooh, we do have young buck chasing down anstrom but here is dan anstrom is around at around 200 health and young buck now trying to make an escape and as he is tanking those turret shots as he does manage to escape ooh, but meanwhile in the mid lane we do have actually got that explosive cast going off and move there almost biting the dust but not quite yet yeah, Copenhagen Wolves are trying to siege up this mid tower. They don't want to give Avalanche an inch here, but they are taking a fair amount of poke here from the Nidalee and Ezreal, so they've got to be careful this early on into the game when they're trying to stack like that. Uh, the minion waves don't last all that long in the current situation. All right, so Sliver and Mover are now tasked to defend this middle turret. They are facing it up against Kowtard and Unlimited, so that might just be painful for them but Countart of course doesn't have his explo uh, explosive cask uh, available to knock someone back towards him as a young buck now once again facing off against Anstrom in the top lane he gets withered up and he is taking quite a lot of damage but Anstrom certainly does not want to tank that turret as he really isn't tank enough to do that to do that for now yeah, I think if Young Buck had had his ultimate available, as he'd used it earlier, uh, he probably would have wanted to fight that, actually. You could see as the engagements were going on, the Nasus just really wasn't able to under... well, was able to hold the damage that Young Buck was giving out. And now that he's got a needlessly large rod, that damage is going to be insane right now. And you can see Copenhagen Wolves now starting to invade the jungle of Avalanche even more, trying to get those deep wards up and try and get any kind of map focus that they can. Yeah, uh, they have picked themselves up the uh, Avalanche Prime blue buff, and the ace in the hole came out on Mouvert. Mouvert is sitting on around 40% of his maximum health right now, so he is in quite a dangerous situation if people to s decide to go for him. But on the other side, we do have Copenhagen Wolves, who might be in trouble here, as Dan just gets spotted out by the ward, and Copenhagen Wolves Unlimited and Forgiven back away safely. But they might just have been in real grave trouble if this Dan decided to actually go for them there. Yeah, Forgiven was actually playing rather greedy. His minion wave was down to half health on the last caster minion that was pushing up to the tower. And he still hadn't started backing off. So Avalanche very nearly got their way around the side there. But if we take a look up in the top lane, you can see already how much damage Youngbuck's doing. And he's going in. Yeah, Hemo Plague went down now. Youngbuck is forced to use that Blood Will to get out of there. Anstrom has popped his Fury of the Sand. So he will be forced to back away here as Youngbuck is going to kill him when uh, he gets the chance to right now. 
No, in that bottom lane, Dan still waiting to get uh, a piece of Forgiven and Lon Limited here. Once again, Ace on the hole comes out onto Mouver, but here is amazing on towards Sliver. Sliver does manage to Arcane Shift out, and Kautard has run into Dan. Dan trying to get a lot of damage on him. Kautard is taking a lot of damage. Here comes Trusha Barrage. He's actually forced to flash. Dragon's Descent comes down, and as Dan just flashes out, now Kautard trying to run. Unlimited eating a javelin, and he is sitting on around 40% health right now as Copenhagen Wolves just back away, but they are looking to start pushing once again. Copenhagen Wolves are playing very aggressive right now. What they're trying to do in all lanes is force people down, but the, stra the Strangle Thorns has already come out and doesn't really result in a fight. But they're trying to chip down Avalanche rather than going for major engages here. And then they're trying to take the turrets from it. It is starting to work out for them. No, oh, Unlimited actually getting caught on another turret. He goes down to Slyre, but that is the sign for uh, Unlimited to go in. Or amazing, rather, as Dan is trying to defend his turret desperately. Mouver went down as a result of that as well. So right now, Forgiven once again trying to push that turret as Kautard is... Um, backing away. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, we do have Big Goose pushing out that middle lane, and he has picked himself up a turret for Avalanche Prime. As Forgiven isn't quite backing yet, as he is facing two members of Avalanche Prime there in that uh, top bottom lane, rather. Okay, so the thing about when you're chipping people down behind a turret is it'll only last as long as you have minions, and then if you engage under the turret when they have a numbers advantage and you don't have any minions, it tends to go fairly bad for you. And Copenhagen Wolves would end up trading away a couple more kills than they would have liked to in that engagement. But it's the evidence of this is up in that top lane. Youngbuck has taken that down, and now he's chasing on towards Hanstrom. Both have used Ghost. Fury the Sand is available. There's only about a 10-second window between the two on cooldown on uh, level. 11 is about 14 seconds where Youngbuck won't have his ultimate, Anstrom will. And Youngbuck just missed time that as I believe he was looking to engage, but it was slightly too late. So right now Copenhagen Wolves are setting up for another dragon attempt, and that would be their very first dragon of the game, I believe, as Avalanche Prime has picked up the first dragon of the game. Now Forgiven eating a javelin in that top lane. We do have still got uh, Youngbuck, and he hasn't got teleport. But Anstrom's teleport is on cooldown, so Copenhagen Wolves will be looking to pick that one up. They do manage to smite it, and Avalanche Prime is looking to back away. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves now even up the dragon score then. So they still have themselves the lead here, two towers to one, and even on kills. However, in the mid lane, it looks like a fight's about to break out. Yeah, Young Buck taking quite a lot of damage. Here comes Anstrom. Dragon's Ascent was being used, but a perfectly placed Blood Will uh, does, just dodges that. Now Crescendo comes out. All sorts of flashes being forced here out of Copenhagen uh, Wolves as Dan has gone down perfectly. Javelin right there of Big Goose takes down a young buck. Perfect Javelin rather. As Forgiven is still split pushing on that Caitlyn and he takes down a turret. But there's two members of Avalanche Prime running for him. Yeah, but the problem is Avalanche only managed to take, as I say, that they take down a second. They only managed to take down two there, and there wasn't even all of the damage from the Copenhagen Walls. Here comes Aatrox engaging on Mover, and I believe he's not going to live here. Yeah, Forgiven is taking a lot of damage. Now it uh, is looking like it is going to be a double kill for Sliver. Yes, it is going to be a double kill. Sliver picking up two kills right there of course as it is a double kill now big goose trying to chase down unlimited unlimited once again taking a lot of damage because of that javelin and right now everyone just returning to their uh, lanes but three people are dead on copenhagen wolves team avalanche is showing us uh, across the past two or three days that when they're given a way back into a game they are very good at taking it they found the picks in the jungle that they needed and really ended up picking up I believe it was four kills overall uh, over the duration of a couple of minutes. Anstrom has finally found uh, his position in front of that tower and with that Sheen is going to be able to start doing a little bit more damage to Youngbug, but Youngbug still will be healing it up. I don't think we're really going to see any kills there in that situation. No, Anstrom really cannot fight this at this point and Youngbug will take him down without, uh, without any trouble as Mouver has uh, gone for that top lane, he's placed the ward and he just went back and Youngbuck is going to be a real real nuisance at this point for Avalanche Prime uh, look at that for Dan as well, Tides of Blood come out and uh, Transfusion rather and 
Dan is taking so much da damage just um, because of those two skills as now Cow Turret and Unlimited as well as Forgiven are looking to take this middle outer turret of Avalanche Prime. Now Young Buck is trying to bait Anstrom in towards Amazing in that top lane. And it doesn't look like Anstrom is going to fall for it quite yet and his ghost is available so uh, not a lot really to be baited in there but there's a lot of pressure in the mid lane out of the Copenhagen Wolves and again they're starting up this game of trying to chip down Avalanche and force them away from the turrets they can just take the turret however they please they do end up taking down that mid turret and now they look to push in further yeah I don't think they can actually take this second turret move there is trying to defend that as good as he can spear landing on unlimited once again Dan looking to finish off unlimited here the teleport comes in explosive cast crescendo on Anstrom but once again a perfectly placed spear finishes off unlimited now forgiven is a second target two mana have fallen off Cop Copenhagen Wolves already and now they are looking to retreat as Avalanche Prime are once again steam rolling through this middle lane Again, yeah, Anstrom is just so much quicker to the fights than Young Buck is. As Young Buck, not running teleport, is forced to run all the way down. Anstrom may have eaten the crescendo, but it only being used on him is actually fine if you're uh, Avalanche, because you really don't want it landing on uh, the more damage-heavy champions such as your Nidalee or your Ezreal. So they're kind of happy with that, and then he's able to catch up with Ghost anyway. So it's ending up turning around for them because Young Buck just purely isn't getting into these fights at the right time. Yeah, and hold that thought for a second because Big Goose might be in trouble here as three members of his team come to help him. In goes Amazing using that Dark Flight. He doesn't have Blood Well, so he goes down instantly. Strangle Stranglethorns have been used. Now Young Buck might be in trouble as well as the Explosive Cast come out. And he down he goes to Big Goose. No problem. Here comes uh, the Ace and Dole. Does manage to finish off Mouver. And that is going to be just a single kill out of that for the um, Copenhagen Wolves team. And just like yesterday, Avalanche have found themselves a position where Copenhagen Wolves just were not ready for that fight. We saw this happen against Dignitas UK, where just out of nowhere, Avalanche started grouping and made really good calls and got themselves back into the game. They've evened it up, and uh, they still are looking fairly deadly here if they can continue to take fights like this. Yeah, so um, Anstrom is sitting on, let's see, I believe it is... How many stacks? I can't completely see. He's sitting on around 198 uh, uh, bonus damage on his siphoning strike, so that is going to hurt quite a lot when he decides to hit on the, anyone on the Copenhagen Wolves team with that. Um, so they really, really want to avoid Anstrom in situations or s small skirmishes when it comes to uh, team fighting. So right now, forgiven with the rest of his team trying to push down this middle lane but young buck is heading towards that bottom lane to maybe start split pushing again but it is looking like he might just get caught Ooh, the uh, grasping roots not quite landing on him he has taken quite a little bit of damage but he will just survive right there now one thing that up until now copenhagen wolves have done very well is make sure they have vision control over everything but mover having picked up that oracles is able to clear it all out and after the last couple of fights copenhagen wolves can't really afford to push out and get down the deeper wards that they really do like to lay down and you can see the spears just chunking through amazing here they do manage to force avalanche away from the dragon though all right so copenhagen wolves now trying to set it at their pace in this dragon pit as they are looking to take that dragon down both teams now just dancing around that dragon looking for the other team to maybe make a move as we do have amazing who has backed away to deal with that middle lane um a minion wave who are just um grouping up as all right now coming wolves once again return to that dragon pit as well as avalanche prime and they have started out that dragon this might just be the beginning of a team fight Cowtart waiting in the wing throwing out that barrel as avalanche prime just quits their dragon and once again they leash it and this might just be a long encounter
The thing is, Copenhagen Wolves can afford to just rotate towards mid lane. They have a stack of minions there, and by doing so, they could pressure that tower and stop Avalanche from doing the dragon. It's a risky play, but I think they should be able to cut Avalanche off. Neither team really wants to go for it, as uh, they are just trying to angle for position as Kautai eats another spear. They can't take too many of those. Oh yeah, that might just be the starting signal for Avalanche Prime to finish off this dragon at this point. Rusha Barrage comes across amazing, taking quite a lot of damage now. Forgiven once again, Ooh, almost eating another spear as the dragon is sitting on around 50% of its total health. And it is looking like Avalanche Prime are looking to finish this one off. Torment, a blaze of Torment come across and Dan picks it up for his Avalanche Prime team. And right now Young Buck might be in trouble as Anstrom is trying to chase him down. But Young Buck will escape and I do not know. No, he hasn't used his ghost. But he has made a clean escape. Phew, Kautai had to body slam away from another spear there. He really does have to start being a little bit more careful about those. As he's uh, taking a lot of damage from them. However, Avalanche will be very happy that they ended up taking that dragon away. They didn't lose anything either. As, uh, really, none of their waves were pushing in. And the only one that was, Anstrom went over very quickly and uh, burned down with that spirit fire. So Avalanche have managed to slow the pace of the game to the speed that they would like it to be right now. And we'll see whether they can hold this pace or whether Copenhagen Wolves will end up being able to rotate their way around Avalanche, which is something that we just haven't seen out of teams yet. Yeah, so when uh, Avalanche Prime are looking to take that dragon, it wouldn't surprise me, the next dragon I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if Copenhagen Wolves just went for that uh, middle inner turret, because that might just just be an even trade for them although the uh, danger in that would of course be that avalanche prime could just walk around and flank them if they choose to stay for too long at that middle inner turret now nasus has finished that trinity force that's gonna go a fair way now to making him even tankier and uh, he can now start to build even more tank items to make sure he just doesn't die in this game on the other hand, you can see Young Buck uh, fairly close to finishing his Abyssal Scepter. There's another key item here that he's going to need to get himself scaling in this game. He's already got a minor CS lead, but Anstrom has been able to close that gap. And really, it's just been by the amount that he's been able to burn down waves with Spirit Fire, he's kind of been neglecting using Siphoning Strike as much as, well, as much as he could get away with. He still has a fair amount of stacks right now. It's set at 270, but he's really had a lot of power behind those Spirit Fires because of the way he itemized a little bit more AP in the earlier game. And Young Buck might be in trouble here. No, he just backs away safely. On the other side, Anstrom as well, uh, split pushing as well, might be in trouble. And he is going to be chased down here by Kautard Forgiven and Amazing. He just went into the blue side's base. He's taking quite a lot of damage because of those turrets. In the meantime, we do have Young Buck going down. Teleport being used by Anstrom right there. Explosive cast went down already. So he can't be interrupted of that. As right now it is looking like Avalanche Prime might just start doing this Baron. But Copenhagen Wolves might be a little bit too close for them to finish that safely. I'm really interested to know who the shot caller is from Avalanche because the past 24 hours I've seen them make some amazing decisions. Oh. Here's an engage. Kautart getting caught, Strangle Thorns come out, and once again, three man crescendo comes out, unlimited, taking so much damage. Amazing force to Dark Flight away. Kautart forced to body slam away for the second time now. Unlimited might be in trouble as Bekus throws out that javelin. Uh, Kautard forced to flash out of that. Wither coming down on Forgiven. Forgiven eating another spear. Anstrom taking quite a lot of damage for himself. Explosive cask uh, come out. Ace and Hole being used as well as Sliver tanks that one. And right now, Ka uh, Copenhagen Wolves are looking to retreat and regroup as well. Our um, Avalanche Prime are doing so as well. You gotta remember though, in the last couple of minutes of play, they took two towers and got a kill and lost nothing. That all they lost was the teleport out of Anstrom and now they're forced to back from this. That's gonna get them to build more items. You can see NASA's already well on the way towards the Randu and Zoman here. I don't think that they were seriously contemplating the Baron there. They do have fairly fast clear. Wow, unlimited takes a half of his damage off there. Half of his health, I should say, with that one spear. 
But I don't think they were entirely expecting to get that Baron. That was more of a bait. And they've ended up getting a lot in the last couple of minutes and not giving much away. Yeah, so now while Unlimited is back, as is Kautard, that might give um, Avalanche Prime the opportunity to do that Baron, but it is heavily worded, so it wouldn't go unnoticed, and Copenhagen Wolves are in quite the position to actually defend it, as uh, Anstrom and Big Goose are a little bit too far away to actually start and help with that right now we do have once again Copenhagen Wolves grouping up around that barren area they know it is warded um, and they might just start and use that Oracle of Unlimited to clear it out Dan has been spotted out to a move in there uh, moving in there and Unlimited has seen him so I don't think he actually wants to move in too far as Mouver and the rest of Avalanche Prime are starting cl to clear out this area of awards. Yeah, and Slave has finished that last Whisper on top of the Trinity Force and the Bloodthirster, so he has a, quite a, a lot of damage now in his kit. And he's had a 4-0 on 4. He's had a very good game, considering uh, especially picking up that first kill very early on in the game. And... Avalanche are now trying to just make sure that Copenhagen Wolves aren't sat around in their jungle chasing Anstrom, who's found amazing here, and this might kick things off. Yeah, Forgiven taking so much damage because of that Javelin. Right now, Avalanche Prime try, uh, trying to chase them down. Kautard has been with it through uh, across comms, through Shop Barrage. Counter taking so much damage, he's surely going to go down as uh, the Dragon's Ascent comes across. Dan picks Counter up. Dan is in the middle of three members of Copenhagen Wolves. He will be looking to pick up his second kill as Anstrom is looking to finish off Forgiven. Double kill for Dan right there. Now Anstrom looking for that kill, but he is taking so much damage. Dark Flight comes across. Now Big Goose has ignited Forgiven, but it isn't quite enough as Anstrom goes down. So right now Avalanche Prime looking for uh, the inhibitor being destroyed right now. Nasus has reached the point where he has far too much health for one person to deal with right now and is just doing too much damage at the same time. You can see all they got was that Nasus after focusing so much on it. They take down the inhibitor, they also get three kills alongside it. And Avalanche are becoming very difficult to deal with here in this game. Yeah, and especially once they now have taken down that inhibitor, that opens up uh, the window for them to take down that Baron, because, of course, the minions will just be hammering on those Nexus turrets if Copenhagen Wolves decide to stay away from their base for too long. Now, Forgiven might be in trouble here. Slimer trying to move in there will finish him off. Slimer has taken quite a lot of damage, so amazing. Who is looking in that wing? Might just be finishing him off, but no, he doesn't. He just backs away. And once again, Avalanche Prime looking to take down another dragon here. Yeah, they uh, will swing towards the dragon, and you can see how much damage Sliver was doing in that fight. He even has a fair amount of lifesteal as well. Fast dragon out and clearing top wave for Avalanche as they re establish their control on this game. It's about time that they've uh, just managed to get those wards out. You can see most of them are freshly placed as well. So, Avalanche will look to establish the Baron control here now with Mover. Yeah, so Mover is, as you say, placing wards all over the Baron area, as we do have Sliver just backing away, as he might just be moving in position for another Baron dance here, as we like to call it. So right now, Dan, he has actually finished off that Banshee's Veil, so he is going to be even harder to kill because he will just be blocking out those kills. And right now, both teams just returning towards that uh, Baron area. And of course, we do have Anstrom split pushing with his teleport up. Now, there's a bit of uh, a lull period in this game as both teams really don't want to allow the other to get any kind of position over the Baron, but I have a feeling that Avalanche just have too much poke that uh, Copenhagen Wolves are going to have to do something about this fairly quickly because they can't really afford to dance around the Baron. Avalanche just will be able to chip them down time and time again. And with Anstrom with his teleport still available, he's going to camp that bottom lane until the fight engages. And he may even be able to get another tower out of it. We saw how quickly he got it before. 
and see if he can do it again. But the longer that Avalanche keep Copenhagen Wolves around this barren area, the more that can be done in that bottom lane. And Anstrom looks like he's going to commit to taking down the tower. Copenhagen Wolves have to do something here. Yeah, so right now Avalanche Prime are looking to interrupt all recalls as fast as they can. Uh, down comes the crescendo, Sliver taking a lot of damage. Dark Flight comes across as well, does Trusha Brass shutdown coming in on Sliver now, Unlimited taking a lot of damage. One kill coming in there, Amazing has got his Blood Whale pop. Will he go down to Anstrom? He uses that Dark Flight, so he won't go down quite yet as he is trying to back away. In the meantime, we did have that teleport coming down, of course, as Youngbuck doesn't quite eat the javelin there, but now Anstrom trying to chase him down. He has got that siphoning strike available, but he gets pinged back on towards that uh, top outer turret, inner turret rather, as they will just be looking to finish that one off, as right now Amazing is sent towards that bottom lane to defend their inhibitor from the minions. Yeah, and that was quite smart out of Amazing. I'll give him a fair amount of credit for this. He was on his way back to the base and then realized that it was actually a cannon wave that was right up against the inhibitor, and that's going to push fairly quickly that inhibitor down. So he actually just managed to micro around and use that lifesteal that uh, comes from his W to make sure that the cannon got pulled away from the inhibitor and kind of microed and adjusted his way to heal himself up. But again, that was what Copenhagen Wolves really needed to do to stop Avalanche. I think they'll be a little bit disappointed they didn't get the teleport out of Nasus before the tower went down, but Nasus's pushing potential right now is just so strong. Luckily for them, with that teleport down, it's not a play they can attempt to replicate anytime soon. Alright, so once again, Avalanche Prime grouping up near that barren area. They might just be looking to uh, start pushing this middle lane, as they have already got some super minions in that lane but they just clear that wave and once again head towards that barren pit as Muvera is clearing out those wards and oh this might spell trouble for amazing he gets interrupted from recalling and avalanche prime's team just heads for that um top inhibitor turret no, they will start to push down this top lane. Of course, the mid lane is still pushing in, but I believe it's due up soon. There it is. Just like clockwork. Inhibitor comes up in the mid lane. Wow, Youngbuck takes a lot of damage there from the poke. And that's what they have to be careful of, because even though they can't send Nasus to the bottom lane right now, they can also send him to the mid lane if they really wanted to, and then just poke away at the top. They'll have to commit at least... I would have to say two here from Copenhagen Wolves to really start to deal with this Nasus. Yeah, so Avalanche Prime uh, might just not have the uh, wave clear here to actually start uh, sieging this turret completely, but they are doing quite a good job off of it. And Muvera just clearing out those wards. And I don't know how long they can actually continue. Uh, Copenhagen Wolves can actually... Uh, continue defending this because they are taking so much damage of those javelins as once again damage comes across on towards that turret and the javelins come across as well this might be the engage as the um, grasping roots come out Ooh, there comes the explosive cask as well does the ace and all Astrum taking quite a lot of damage unlimited has actually fallen because of uh, the poke I believe now Avalanche Prime will be looking to finish off this turret. Lock it over the Iron Solari has been used. And right now they will be looking to finish off their second inhibitor. Forgiven, taking a lot of damage. And Anstrom using that wither on Kautard. Kautard taking a lot of damage. And right now they are looking to finish off three inhibitors at once. Yeah, and if they can get all three, that pretty much is going to spell the end for the Copenhagen Wolves, who are desperately trying to stay into this one they will push avalanche away from that third inhibitor for now but now they're locked in their base and if that poke was bad enough as it was avalanche now have free reign to go and take that baron and give themselves extra damage or regen the only thing will stop that is if copenhagen wolves gamble that avalanche won't be there and try and rush a baron of their own and it is looking like the three members of the Copenhagen Wolves are heading towards that barren area, but it is, I think it is all too little too late. 
as the Avalanche team is there already. Spears coming out and Copenhagen Wolves will be forced out of here. Amazing, almost taking another spear. Here comes Dan using that Dragon's Ascent Forgiven, using that 90 caliber net to get out of there. And here comes Big Goose. He forces the Blood Well. Once again, Crescendo comes across, but Unlimited takes so much damage. Down goes Big Goose, though. And Young Buck using that Zonia's Hourglass right now. Anster might be in trouble here as well as Mover, Luxop, Kautard, Dark Flight comes across as well. Do the Strangled Thorns, amazing, taking so much damage. Ignite is taking on him, Mover takes him down. And there's only three members remaining on that Copenhagen Wolves team. This might be it, this might be the opportunity for Avalanche Prime to barge in towards that Nexus and take it out. But there is still three members standing between them and that Nexus. Yeah, now I made that observation, assuming that they would have at least had one Blade of the Ruin King here, which they don't. Uh, uh, Aatrox has built full tank, which is not all that surprising, as uh, that is one of the ways you can build Aatrox jungle, but without a Blade of the Ruin King, they really do not have the damage to rush it quickly, since most of Avalanche was still alive and would be able to cross that distance fairly quickly. So that, they're very lucky there at Copenhagen Wolves that that didn't cost them the game. Youngbuck managed to pick up a kill fairly early on in that team fight, and then they managed to kite their way back out of their own jungle and stay alive. They do, however, have to be careful because now they're losing their bottom inhibitor and Baron has gone to Avalanche. Oh, actually, Mover has gone down now. Copenhagen Wolves are trying to chase down Sliver. Sliver has gone down as well. Now Dan might be in trouble. He does manage to escape. But we do have still got Anstrom and Amazing facing off over these Nexus turrets. As Copenhagen Wolves are trying to desperately defend their base against Anstrom. Anstrom has taken down one Nexus turret. Now he is looking to try and escape from the base. He it is looking like he uh, will be able to do so. As Big Goose and Forgiven are facing off in this middle lane. And Big Goose might just be able to have the power to take Forgiven down here. But Forgiven is might just be able to uh, dodge those javelins a little bit too good. Might have found himself Anstrom in the jungle here. Will wither him and be able to uh, get away from that. But with three inhibitors down, it's going to be a very difficult game for Copenhagen Wolves to come back in. They're already having enough trouble dealing with Anstrom on his own that the rest of Avalanche plus three waves of super minions might be too much for them to contend with right now. Yeah, so as the double super minion waves are moving in towards that Copenhagen Wolves base, I would uh, expect to see Avalanche group up and go for a final push here. Um, but it is looking like Sliver is... Oh no, he's actually heading towards that middle lane to join Dan and Mouver. Yeah, there we go. Avalanche Prime looking to group up here. As Forgiven with that red pot desperately trying to defend his base. And I don't think Copenhagen Wolves are going to come out ahead in this uh, fight we've got coming up. Yeah, they are just going to be like the Constrictor and uh, wrap their way around the Copenhagen Wolves. Will Avalanche and oh, Spear. Now that is a lot of damage to be done to... A Vladimir this late in the game. Normally you see him tanking a lot of damage, but Youngbuck just hasn't really got the health to deal with it right now. You can see Copenhagen Wolves are trying to dig in deep, trying to make sure they get as much damage and pop the Banshees that Avalanche have, and then maybe try and engage. But I feel like as the minions start flooding in, we may end up seeing the fight here out of Avalanche. Oh, Sliver taking so much damage because of that ace in the hole. Now Young Buck and the rest of his team desperately trying to defend that base. In he goes using the Hemo Plague. Big Goose doesn't quite get knocked off. Strangle Thorns comes down. Amazing, taking so much damage, but he is still alive and unlimited. It goes down to Sliver in the process. Now we do have Big Goose as, and Mouver going down as well. And in the meantime, we do have Forgiven once again, desperately trying to defend that Nexus. But Dan and Anstrom are ramming on towards it. Young Buck at around 80 HP is using that Zonia's Hourglass and the very first game of the Chaos TV Challenger series goes to Avalanche Prime. A really nice win there by Avalanche Prime. They're a team that have had a couple of changes in the last couple of weeks and nobody really knew how good they were. And now they've got wins over two former winners of the EUS Challenger series in Dignitas UK and the Copenhagen Wolves. And it's a very strong looking team right now. They do still have uh, 
more games to go as that was game one